Words with Mayor McKay. This is your first ever deep fried Nanaimo bar, Bill? Yes. Okay, give it a shot. Go ahead, okay, just go dig right in. Oh. So it's been deep fried in a beer batter with cinnamon. It was frozen to start with. And I hear that the, pro I'm gonna use my fingers, sorry. Oh, okay, my ready? Okay, going in. Mmm. Okay. It's very good. It's not as sweet as a normal Nanaimo mm. bar. It changes the texture. And I think that the, the sort of, can we call it grease flavor? Because it is deep fried. Mixes well with the custard and the um, graham crackers. You can stab me out of the way if I'm eating too many. This is breakfast. I'll hold it down for you. Mm. This is breakfast. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've got almost every food group right here. Perfect. All you need is some bacon. I don't love that. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so Nanaimo bars, a dessert that holds our city's name. When you're out and about, you're sort of an ambassador for the city. How much of a, an ambassador is a Nanaimo bar for Nanaimo? The, the tourism in Nanaimo tells me that it's, our, believe it or not, it's our number one attraction. Really? It really is. Um, they love, uh, they love the, the story it. behind it. When they, when they finally hear the story, they, um, they love exploring. So what is the story, briefly, for those? A lot of newcomers watch our show and well, haven't heard this before. From what I understand, it boiled down to this was a, a snack that when somebody's coming from England, of course, people came to the coal mines here in Nanaimo, when somebody else would come over, family would send on the trip mm -hmm. to Nanaimo a, a Nanaimo bar cake. And they would mm -hmm. stay during the entire voyage all the way to Nanaimo. So if you find a Nanaimo bar in your fridge that's been there for a bit, don't worry about the best before date, because they last for a long time. <laughs> now, we're here at Pirate Chips, and they're part of the Nanaimo Bar Trail, mm -hmm. one of the successful campaigns from tourism in Nanaimo. Um, now, I'm just wondering, though, how many calories, and what are you going to do to, to earn this? Well, <laughs> how are you going to keep your pants buckled properly, Bill, after eating something like this? Well, <laughs> I think I might need another. I, I'll, I'll be able to let one notch off. If you were to ask my wife what I was going to do to work it off, uh -huh. she'd probably she'd say, say mow the lawn. That's exactly <laughs> what she'd say. And oh, by the way, my car's dirty. Get with it. Okay, well, this one's for you, Val. <laughs> and these things, <laughs> the, 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 the gal that cooked this, she absolutely refused to tell us how many calories are in this. I'm guessing. She said five days worth. Five days worth of marathons, I think mm -hmm. she put in there. Okay, did you get some whipped cream in there? Mm. It's good. Um, it almost tasted like cornflakes. Oh, yeah. interesting. Maybe that's the next incarnation of the night. I'm missing the cherry, though. Mm -hmm. Missing the cherry. Mm -hmm. It's no cherry. Go presents Random Acts of Magic. Hey, everybody. We're here at Hometown Yoga, and uh, I have a new friend. Her name is Pam, and she's going to help me uh, with a little trick. Okay. Deck of cards. All the cards them. are different, so everybody can see. And they're very different. Reach in there and grab one. Uh... Any one you'd this like. One. That one? All right. Show the camera. Don't let me see it. All right, saw it. Okay, saw it. Very awesome. Drop it down. Yeah, right there. Very good. We're going to put this one on top. Now, in yoga, you do a lot of metaphysical stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these cards, put them down on the floor right between us. Okay. I want you to put your hands out, just like this. Watch the cards really close. Ready? Yeah. Watch. Here we what? go. Here they go. What? Hang on. Here's where it gets really weird. Watch. Whoa. There you go. <laughs> I know. A little bizarre. Pam, I don't even want to touch the card. I'm a little scared. Reach down and grab that. Okay. Let's see if we got it. Did we get it? Hey! That's awesome. It. That's it. Another random act of magic. I'm Chelsea Damon, general manager of the Nanaimo Fringe Festival. This is our fifth year and we've got 50 shows over two weeks. There's gonna be ghosts, robots, old school oration, shadow puppetry, and so much more. One show is based on a best-selling memoir about growing up with a gay dad. In another show, an artist builds a functioning lie detector and straps himself in. There. Nice. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> so throughout the show, I will be latching myself onto these as well as other machines. Um, some of them a little more sillier. Um, and uh, yeah, ultimately, it's a show about trying to find 
what I believe is true, because that's ultimately what a lie detector machine measures. It's what you yourself believe to be true. At a musical about menopause, they promise you'll laugh till you pee. Well, ain't that a shame, but you know you're to blame. Phil Daly, don't you dare come home. Canada boasts a thriving fringe circuit that travels across the country each summer, stopping in most major cities for two weeks so that artists can tour their way across the country with the shows that they've created. The fringe style of theater is raw and intimate. For the most part, the artists you see on stage are performing the stories of their own lives and imaginations. I would go to Amazing Savings and I'd be like, oh my god, I can have whatever I want. Whatever I see, I can be the owners of these things. Expired muffin mix? Two boxes. No problem. Our shows are running August 13th to 23rd. Check out detailed information on all of the shows in our festival at NanaimoFringe.com. You can also buy tickets there. It's just $12 to see a show, or a festival pass will let you see five shows for $40. Pick up our program guide for all the information you need to navigate tons of events going on at Nanaimo Fringe, August 13th to 23rd. Go interactive with Kate. We're inside the Nanaimo Daily News on McCullough Road with Julie Chadwick, the entertainment editor for the paper, working on The Hub, the entertainment section that comes out every Thursday. And there's a lot of talk right now about Fringe. And something's really standing out for you yeah. at Fringe this year. One story that I was working on today, I interviewed Alison Weering. So she, a super interesting interview. She is doing a one-woman show called Confessions of a Fairy's Daughter. Oh, what's that about? So it's about growing up with a gay dad in the 1980s and um, it's kind of fascinating because she goes into the huge difference from one generation to another in how our attitudes have changed and how it was so difficult for him even just coming to terms with understanding himself and um, I think at the time like she said there was a lot of um, ideas that it was basically like a mental illness she mm -hmm. said like now her son looks at it like, whoa, what's the big deal? Like, why are you even writing a book about it? Because she wrote a book, a memoir about it as well. And so she said, you know, it's amazing how much has changed from then to now. And um, I think also, like, she talked a lot about how uh, people kind of really relate to this story because it's not just about um, being gay, but also about this idea of perfection and about how so many people... Um, realize that their families aren't this kind of mm -hmm. perfect nuclear family ideal model kind of. I think we can all relate to that. Yeah, and so I thought that was really interesting um, as well. Like she said, that's kind of contributed to the huge response that her that her show has got. It's a really good example of how arts has a way, even though we look at it as entertainment, it really is commentary for where we are in our society. So as an arts reporter, mm -hmm. You kind of get to get your, you know, the, mm -hmm. the into the meat of some of our issues in yeah, society. Yeah, it's just another way of, of looking at societal issues is exploring them through the arts. And one thing she talked about as well was how the Fringe offers people like her an opportunity to get into it from a different place. Like she didn't have to necessarily be a theater person and educated in that. She could just sort of mm -hmm. enter into it as someone who had a natural talent mm -hmm. for it. You love these stories. <laughs> She's definitely all about the stories. Another person, we're not going to get into it now because we're almost out of town time, but uh, Julie's gearing up to touch base with David Gogo about his latest CD, which uh, yeah. is called... Uh, Vicksburg Call. Vicksburg so Call. And he's got a show coming up at the Moose Hall on the 21st. Right. Fun job. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> Go Interactive with... Me, Kelly. We're in with the bunnies here at Parksville Qualcomm SPCA and there's two in particular that are looking for homes. This is Jessica. Jessica, what can you tell us about Pepper and Basil? They came to us from Nanaimo. Uh, we don't have much about them. They are litter trained and they do enjoy being pet. They do need some e experience being handled, but other than that, they're both very friendly. What kind of pets does a rabbit make? What kind of home do you have to have for a rabbit to be a pet? Uh, you could keep them outside in a secured cage if you want, or you can keep them inside and they're litter trained as well, so they can just roam around like cats and dogs inside your house. I have heard that, that rabbits being litter trained can just have their own little area that where they go and they don't mess up the rest of the house. Yeah. Is there any kind of home in particular that these two wouldn't be suited for? Probably not with dogs. Um, they should be fine with cats as long as the cats don't bug them a lot. 
Uh, they'd be good with children. Pepper did seem like he liked a little bit of a scratch on the head, but I imagine if they're in a home, they might become even more friendly. Yeah. So if you're looking for a new best friend and want to try something other than a cat and a dog, maybe consider the rabbits here at Parks Both Welcome SPCA. Four H Snapshots Photography Club participated in a day in the life of Parksville and several of their images were included in the publication. You can pick up a copy for yourself here at the Mac and see the original images. One of my favorites, not that I want to pick favorites, is called Graduation Day at Sunrise Preschool. The young photographer here is named Kaylin Sundberg Groot. She's a member of the 4-H Snapshots Photography Club uh, graduation day. I think that is so cute. We're going to be right back with more from Go after a short break. Incentives to harvest rainwater, what to expect at colliery dams, and a brand new Arbutus RV Island Adventure.